So Cody Ko did a video called The Darman Experience. And if you guys know Darman, he makes content mostly, I think, on Facebook. And he gets hella views, like lots of views. But the thing about Darman that's interesting is I used to think, like, who watches this, this guy? Like, who's this content for? It's actually for a lot of people. And it's not exactly as simple as you would think. And so a lot of people judge his content but wonder how he gets the views. And it's because he knows exactly his audience and he's nice enough to cater to them. And so let's let's watch this video together so you guys can see why he's so unique as a content creator and completely misjudged so much of the time. Even me, even I misjudge, misjudge star man. Let's watch Cody Ko. What's up? What's up, man? What's up, man? It's Darman. <laughs> How are you? I'm good, bro. How are you? I'm good, man. I have a, I have a funny, I have a funny idea for a video. I'll, I'll pitch something to you. Obviously, you can say no, you can say whatever. But I was thinking it would be, it would be a hilarious video because you know I ripped on the sketches, but I don't know what it takes to actually, you know, create one, right? So, I, I think it would be funny if I wrote one. And you can read it, and if you like it, then you can produce it. I mean, if you're not into it, I totally understand. But that was like my little idea. I love it when YouTubers are doing collabs and they ask each other, and they're like, "Is that okay?" Papa Gut is here, and he is correct. Happy Halloween, Papa Gut. Um, yeah, he is the leader. You're right, Dan. He is true, true. All right, let me tell you a little bit more about this idea that I just pitched horribly over the phone. So over the past year on my channel, I've made two videos about this guy named Darman and the con- Whoa, Cody Ko gives you young Brad Pitt vibes? <laughs> if Cody heard that, he would be- Cody is my favorite humble king. He's such a humble short king. He would probably be like, what? Stop. He's like a computer nerd. I love that for him because Cody is such a sweetheart. He is so lovely. I just think like comparing him to Brad Pitt m would be like the sweetest compliment because like at the same time, like, Brad Pitt's so like handsome and Cody's very handsome, but Cody and Kelsey are so humble that I don't even like, it's so cute. I love that. It's that he makes, which is inspirational videos. He makes sketches that are meant to inspire people and teach them lessons. When are you finally going to get rid of this junk and get a nice car? Bella, I'm telling you, once this business takes off, I'm going to be able to take you wherever you want to go. How many times do I have to tell you that your stupid idea is not going to work? Someone doesn't believe in you during your worst? Then don't let them celebrate with you during your best. And he posts them on Facebook and YouTube and he's grown a massive audience from these videos. And I've made fun of them twice. Two dedicated videos tearing down these sketches. My dad might not be able to afford an expensive house or designer clothes. My dad may not be able to afford <laughs> designer clothes. Yeah, one second, my Uber's here. <laughs> hi, yes, hi. Uber plus. <laughs> now, were these videos fun to make? Okay, I, of, of course, when Cody and Noel work directly together, it's always, cringe is so good. Like their show, cr or that's so cringe is so good. Um, but I will say, it is fair. All of us did this to Darman. Like literally, that's why I think the Darman experience is so interesting because it, it felt that way. When you're watching his, watching his videos, you're like, who the heck is this for? Like, is this like, who is this for? It's, it's um, I think as a YouTuber, I'm always amazed when someone has a concrete idea of their brand and it shows through the numbers. Like again, you know, I tend to be a content creator who's just like making content because I love it and I love doing this job and I appreciate it so much and thank you so much for liking the stream and being a part of the memberships and all that. But I don't have like, and this is probably, you know, I don't have like a brand in mind. I'm not sitting here like, today we will do this, this, this. Darman knows his audience, specifically makes content for a specific audience and kills it. And I'm like, wow, if I ever figured out like exactly how to do that, that would be so interesting. I just don't want to alienate anyone. So, but Darman has an audience in mind and it's beautiful, bro. It's just amazing how he does it. And that's why I, I oh, I just, I'm so impressed. Yes, yeah, they were. It's always fun to look at something and go, ha ha, that's trash. But that's the downside of this genre of content is that that becomes the default. You know, I, I look at something and I just try to see the bad in it now. And it's very easy to do that. On the surface, yeah, his videos seem a little bit corny, but mm -hmm. yet they all get millions of views. Killed He's got it. two and a half million subscribers on, on YouTube and 17 million followers on Facebook. 17 million followers on Facebook. Think about who is on Facebook. 
What is the demographic he's appealing to? Guys, I haven't had a Facebook in like six years. Seven years? I don't even remember when I got rid of my Facebook, even though I used to live on Facebook all in my early, early 20s. But this is so like if Darman listened to any of us losers, he would never, but he knew what he was doing. He had a plan, right? 17 million followers on Facebook. That's no joke. Please remember, we're not just telling stories, we're changing lives. To lean on a cliche here, it is easier to tear something down than it is to build something up. So I thought, why don't we learn what it took mm -hmm. to build what Darman has built? So that's what I pitched him. He had DM'd me after my last video saying it was funny. So I thought, okay, he's not, Horribly offended by the see good humor can't stop laughing. Thanks for the love bro. Love the skit at the end You should start a new inspirational channel. Let me know if you ever want to do anything together See how Darman is having a positive experience with criticism or jokes made at his expense But he knows like Cody Ko and Noel aren't ill-intentioned peace people. They're not bad people And so there's something so endearing about that that makes me like him better because I'm like, oh, okay You can like Laugh at yourself, which I think is so important. Who did we cover recently? And they like could not handle it. I mean, other than Rosanna, God bless her, who takes herself way too seriously. Who was it that was taking themselves so seriously? And I'm like, man, see, if you made a joke and moved off to it and like made it, who was it? I can't remember now. Was it her? Let's see if he'll go for this idea. So I called him and I said, let me write and act in one of your sketches. I'm sure making one of these is a lot harder than- Oh, the button. How Cody Co. well, who was it? I was reviewing somebody, but Cody also makes fun of the button and now him and the button collab. And it's kind of like, cause when you can laugh at yourself, cause it's kind of, all of this is silly. Everything we do is kind of, Jack's films. Was it Jack? Or even Sniper Wolf? I don't know, all these people who take themselves too seriously though. Who do want people? Oh yeah, it was Jack's film saying, don't respond to me, don't make content off me, something like that. Mm making fun of it so um yeah i'm you know i'm certainly down to want to do stuff and try new things so yeah i'd be fired up to work with you more and kind of figure out you know what other things we could do together in the future as well so awesome um yeah I'll, I'll, let me just circle back to my team yep. to make sure that you know they all feel good about it and yep. then uh I'll, I'll text you or whatever and we'll go from there awesome yes all right, I think this could be great. And I, 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 I'm I, glad that he's into it. And he's a great guy. That's what I, I assumed he'd be a nice guy. Uh, I guess the next step is figuring out what I'm gonna write about, so. <sighs> it's gonna be so hard for me to write, write one of these seriously. I've never written anything serious in my life. <laughs> <laughs> I've never tried to teach anybody a lesson ever. Damn, how would I do this? I would probably start with the problem. Like, I would start with maybe like uh, misogyny or like body shaming. Ooh, I'd go for like body shaming. Like, I'd do like a, I'd pick the problem first. Like, what is the problem I'm solving? Because Darman's kind of one of those series where it's like, hey, do you know when you talk to people that way, it can hurt their feelings. So I'd probably do like a body shaming one where someone like made fun of someone for how they looked. And then they're like, did you know that like bullying doesn't help people? You know, one of those. What is a lesson? What's a lesson? Oh, one lesson is patience. That is the most wonderful Kelsey. She is a kindergarten teacher, a preschool teacher. So she knows she should be helpful. It's a virtue. Nice. It's one of my favorite things to say. Wow. That's actually really good. Because no, that actually is, that's, I mean, I can relate to that because I, patience is not something that I have. Right. It's not a virtue Same. that I, Same. that I am, uh, familiar with. Familiar with. Yeah. <laughs> it's not one that I possess. Yeah, no, not even, kind of, not even a little bit. After a little bit more brainstorming, we finally came up with the narrative of like a, a rich kid and a poor kid. They work at the same job and the, the rich kid doesn't want to work because he thinks he's the best and the poor kid understands that he has to be patient and work hard. And I think maybe you fast forward three years and this guy's like a Michelin-starred chef. Yeah, and then the other guy has to come back and work for him at the same job because he kept quitting all his jobs and he never got any experience. <laughs> I love it! I love it! I love it! Woo! I think we got it, folks. So I put pen to paper or fingers to keyboards and I wrote that bitch. I stayed up all night. I didn't. I actually, I, I wrote four pages though, which is a lot for me. It took me a while. And when it was finally done, I said, I'm sorry, I just like love using Cody and Kelsey as an example because we love them, right? They're like so wholesome and so lovely. 
Now imagine that one of them cheated on each other. Would not would this not be devastating? Would this not be de- I don't want to be hung up on this, but I just feel like you should you should want a wholesome, lovely relationship where you guys are a team and Cody and Kelsey are a team. They're a team. Okay? Could you imagine if they cheated or if one of them hit each other, would you not be mortified? Don't do this in your relationships. Have a Cody and Kelsey lovely, wholesome relationship. Treat each other well. Okay? Don't justify your toxicity. Down with Kelsey to do a table read to make sure that shit was quality. Mm. I said, how many more minutes on those eggs? Stop yelling at me, okay? Yes. Hey, what's up, man? Yeah, what's up, dude? <laughs> what's up, bro? How are you, We've been man? Trying to coordinate this for it feels like a month. I know, right? We finally did it. I know. Are you moving, or is that just a constant <laughs> state? <of things? laughs> it's just always like this, dude. <laughs> it's. I wish I could say I was moving. So after insulting the state of my studio pretty much right off the bat, <laughs> we chatted for like half an hour about the script and about what in his experience makes one of his videos go super viral and what changes we could make to mine to ensure that mine does. And keep in mind, I asked for this. He said, you can write it without my help, but I said, no, you got the sauce. I wanna mm. make sure this fits in on your channel. Yeah, yeah, so here's yeah. what he said. See, this is like what's kind of amazing is Darman is giving Cody a space on his channel. And I'm gonna, we should go back and try to find the video and see how Cody's did long-term versus a Darman original. Raise the stakes and the emotional weight. If the antagonist loses his job, make it clear that it's his dream job and also make him the most hateable person ever. And finally, oh. be simple and visual. Your audience, you know, you know who your audience is. Listen to My this. audience is universal. Mm. So not yeah. everybody speaks English as their first language. Mm. Keep that in mind. And a lot of like, there's a lot, there's a big gap for audience. So we try to have things that are very visually compelling, not just rely on dialogue. Uh, and a lot of kids watch it. Yeah. Um, so See, this is why it's cool. This is why here. I like doing this stuff because I those things I would have never considered, right? And it's yeah. easy for me to sit here and be like, "Oh, why is he just spewing out the message? He's spoon feeding his audience." But it's also, yeah. it's also like, yeah, there are people that legitimately don't speak English who right. need sentences like that to really understand right. what's going mm -hmm. on. I would have never yeah. considered that. That's so. why we use basic basic English in most of the time. So I isn't that amazing? Like this is so, guys. This is so fascinating. Because every time people watch Starman videos, they were like, why is he talking to the audience like they're kind of dumb? But it's not that people are dumb. It's that people get lost in the sauce of different languages and different people use language differently. And the moment you bring slang into it or culture, like even Croatian, the reason it's so difficult to learn Croatian is because every city has their own like slang and dialect of Croatian. So I'm learning standard Croatian, standard, like news Croatian because that's the one that they speak mostly around where I am. And so that's kind of helpful. That's what my family speaks, like my new in-laws. <clears throat> so I'm learning that Croatian. But if I go to any other city or town, I should be mentally prepared to hear words that I don't exactly know. And I think that's interesting. And that's how it is with English. I mean, that's how it is generationally. But I love that he knows that because one of the feedback I've even gone back on my channel is, oh, like, um, I can't always follow what you're saying. You're using words I don't know. And then I feel kind of weird because then I have to go look them up. And yes, people can ask me to clarify what that means in the comments, but some people don't feel comfortable doing that or they don't want to. And I always ask myself, well, how can I like simplify my language down even more to make sure everyone is invited, right? Because I'm not trying to on purpose exclude people. <clears throat> I want people to feel welcomed. But it's amazing to me like how I forgot like people can feel left out if it's, if they feel like they can't keep up, right? It's not that they don't want to, it's just they feel like, oh, this isn't for me, I guess. But I think introspection's for everybody. So I was like, oh, shoot. So Darman does this. He like knows he has this universal audience. And even though he's choosing English as his primary language, he's choosing the most simplified version of it to invite the most amount of people to enjoy it from all ages. Oh, it's so good. I told him, all right, I'm gonna start from scratch. I'm gonna write something brand new and it's going to move you. <laughs> you gotta do it for the camera one time because I know I've been butchering it this whole time. Darman! <laughs> Back to the drawing board. 
This time, I wrote a sketch about a girl sitting at a cafe with her two bitchy friends. You know, just classic, awful, rich, materialistic people. The protagonist sees her old friend across the street. Her bitchy friends won't let her say hi because she looks poor. So then she doesn't nice. say hi. Later, she gets in a car accident and goes into a coma. <laughs> yes, I took this emotional weight thing very seriously. Her bitchy friends don't come visit her in the hospital, but her old friend does. The lesson, no more fake friends, baby. And then I had a funny scene where, uh, you know, the, the, the rich girl, the rich bitchy girls come to the hospital just to take a selfie with a person <laughs> in a coma. Wow. It was not the best sketch. I gotta oh, be honest, I sent it, it to him. He oh, didn't like it. I didn't like his it. His screen went black. <laughs> I was like, where'd the video go? So we switched back to the old idea. You're literally learning a life lesson right now. You're learning not to judge a book by its cover. And there's a lot more work that goes into certain things than you think. And you make fun of things because they seem simple. And then you try and do them yourself and you're struggling. True, Kelsey. You make fun of Darman because it seems simple and reductive. And then you realize it's very hard to do it. And Darman's evidence is proven in his numbers. It works. So what is the magic that Darman knows that is so hard for Cody to figure out? Which is so difficult for even me to figure out. It's like, what the F? Like, how does this guy do it? But he does it. And that's, oh, it's so, guys, this is like what my brain thinks is so interesting about people. How did he find such a perfect formula? All right. Well, I just finished the third script. <laughs> I basically just wrote the whole thing from scratch again. I feel like this is, I feel like this is more in line with what he was talking about. And I feel like this is, this matches his content a little bit better. A couple days later, we locked the script. Then I met with the people that were gonna be running the production. We picked the actors, we picked the location, and it was on. All that was left was to shoot it. All right, how are you? Just shoot it. This is yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, cool. Oh, this you is you during see? COVID. You didn't really know. You know I'm only seeing half your face. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, so we're all set up. Um, hey guys. Hey, what's up, man? How are you? That's Ben Carlos. He told me we were going to sit down to shoot an outro, and then he ended up surprising me with a 5 million subscriber gift Aww. <laughs> on camera. And cool shit, too. I'm talking like a bunch of alcohol, which works for me. And then I put on my sexy ass restaurant clothes costume, and I was good to go. Boom. That's me frying, frying some eggs or some shit. <laughs> That's me stirring some sauce. Scene two, take 26, marker. And action. I have to leave Cody's in. He just got promoted. And that's all I did. I just walked up to a table. Acting, bitch. Learn about it. I didn't want to make myself a main character, all right? But I did give myself one other little line that you'll have to wait till the final sketch to see. So I said thank you to everyone, and I left. And five days later... He texted me, he said, it's ready. And I said, just post it, man. I don't even need to see the edit, just post nice. it. I wanna record myself watching it for the first time. And so without further ado, here that is. All right. Oh my God, I love that. Hold on. Darman redeemed for me by this video. See, no, me, no, literally me too. Like I genuinely was so judgmental of Darman. And then I saw this video and I was like, my bubble was popped. I was like, Look at me judging a bitch with those numbers. How dare I judge this man for not even thinking about like his thoughtfulness or the consideration for his audience or even if he's just in it to make money. He knows his audience enough to be successful. So like he's successful on so many levels to me that I'm just like, I could be learning from Darman. But instead here I am like judging him because, oh, this seems so simple and reductive. And like, who is this even for? It's for his 17 million followers on Facebook. Girl. Are you ready? I'm ready. I'm so ready. So Darman ready. Darman sketch has been up since Friday. It's now Monday. Mm -hmm. It's been up for a whole weekend. I wanted to let it simmer a little bit. Okay. I wanted to let How it. Many views, uh, Cody? You know, let the let it marinate. Mm -hmm. Let the people really judge. What so, have people been saying? I haven't. I haven't looked. Okay. I wanted to save it all for this. I'm just gonna let this play, and we're just gonna watch it. Okay. Yo, watch. In a few months, we will be the head chef of this kitchen. Yeah, I want to be head chef too, but come on, man. It's our first day on the job. Give it time. <laughs> I don't have time. I want it now. <laughs> Jake, you can't cook eggs on high heat. Good eggs have to be cooked slowly. Otherwise, they'll be dry. Uh, look, 
The faster I cook these eggs, the more customers I can feed. Common sense, Gordon. Gordon? Gordon who, Ramsey? Not everything is meant to be done fast. Some things require patience. Now you've said you. that to me before, I have, probably. I have. Those exact sure. same words. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Well, hopefully you learned something from this video then. <laughs> Is that literally just water? Wow. Kevin, this tastes amazing. Was that literally just salt water? It's got so much flavor. I can tell you really took your time with it. Thanks, Gordon. I can tell you really took your time with it. Whoa. Whatever, man. What does he know? Mm. Behind. Oh. oh! Are you serious? Watch where you're going! Now I'm going to cook this all over again! I'm so sorry, man. <laughs> <laughs> you- I've never seen you look so sad! <laughs> oh, man. Did I kill it? You- yeah, you did. I killed, he killed it! killed it. He killed it. That was the one line that I wrote for myself. Behind. It was behind, because I thought it was funny. Yeah. That the Ooh. only thing I said was behind. And then he wrote, I'm so sorry, man. So I was like, yeah, I'll say that one too. I like I just love so how good. distraught you are. <laughs> you I you are so sad. I do you stared at him for so long. Oh man, Lara <laughs> That's what was so funny. He looked for so After he long. Said that. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. It's okay. Uh, just clean it up and make some new eggs. What? No way! Oh. I'm a cook, not a cleaner. Get that server to clean it. Look, in the beginning, you have to do every task that is required. Wait, you think that I didn't have to pick up any spills? You ever watched Kill it Bill? It took me years before I became head chef. Well, I don't have years. I'm trying to get this bread now. Damn. Damn. I'm trying to get this bread. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> also, I think the people who are casted for this are perfect. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was all me. It wasn't... Well, I mean, like, they they presented two options, and I picked... Well, I love it. Okay. Success comes with patience, Jake. Great things take time. Hey, it's okay. I can clean it up and make some new eggs. No. Wow. Look who's going the extra mile. Also, can I say something really interesting about, like, tropes? Is the reason I think Darman's work works is because he tropes it the fuck out, right? Like ultimately what we're seeing here is the example of the one guy versus the one kind of, these are two very specific kinds of people, right? So they fit the trope so well and they even look like, yes, Kay, the actors fit the trope. So they even fit it the way they look, everything about it. Right. And I think that's what appeals to people. So I, when I tell you my five rules for being a whole human being, and the last one is know who you are in the anime, know who you are in the Darman video. Who are you in a Darman video? Are you the chef who's like, I'm better than you. I don't need to clean this because some of you are that is that person. It's like some of you is you. Some of you are that human and you all just got to face the music and realize that about yourself. Right. Or are you the guy who's like, I'll clean it up. No big deal. Are you you know what I mean? Like no matter how much we want to pretend like we know better, we'll never be the like the bad guy in the video or whatever. We all have moments. And that's what's so difficult about introspection is you have to be like, oh, my God, am I that person? <laughs> embarrassing let's change that but before you can change it you have to even recognize it in the first place and I deal with it so many people and it's really hard when people are stuck in the narrative of like I'm a good person and I'm like yes Habibi we're all good people right like minus very few we're all good people that doesn't mean good people don't make bad decisions or don't always that doesn't mean they're perfect and so I think that's the issue is people think well I'm good so and I'm like, yes, totally. But also, you know what I mean? The Okay. Like, is this is this a bad person? He's kind of an asshole. Is he evil? Does he like murder babies and make them into soup? Probably not. But he's being inconsiderate. He's being rude. He's not thinking about people's feelings. He's barely thinking about his own success. He's not even thinking about, he's not even being introspective enough to help himself in this moment, right? So it's, again, you know, why is that so funny? Know who you are in the Darman video? I'm just saying, know who you are in the Darman video. And it's easy to think we're the character that's being portrayed the best. But believe it or not, a lot of the time we're 
Okay, we're the lesson. We're the ones who have to learn the lesson. Oh. This is something for Jake to work on. So. This music Daddy has is spoken. so ominous. It's so intense. It's really I, like, fucking need to intense. Know. I want to keep watching. Are you going to clean it? <laughs> Do it, Jake. Do it, Jake. I don't have time for this. No! I'll go be the head chef at another restaurant. No! I quit. Jake and- oh, Jake missed the lesson. He, he didn't, what? He didn't what? He didn't eat the cupcake. Now, of course, he's not technically the extreme of not eating the cupcake yet, but he's heading there. What if every time someone offered him the cupcake, he didn't continue to eat it? How, if you don't experience the introspection enough, you will eventually whittle down to like a nice little one status maybe. Maybe. Or maybe he'll just always be an arrogant too, right? Because like arrogance can get you plenty of places in life. Like, you know what I mean? But eat the cupcake. What's his name? I just said it. He didn't eat the cupcake though. Mm-hmm. Ends up quitting his job and starts applying at different places. Before long, he lands a job at a new restaurant. He tells himself that in no time, he's gonna become the head chef. Meanwhile, Kevin continues to be patient and put in the hard work. Gordon is so impressed with his commitment and dedication. Jake, on the other hand, wants fast results. He's not willing to be oh. patient, and as soon as things- He dropped another egg? Things get hard, he immediately quits. <laughs> he quit for the same reason? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the same egg reason? Because he dropped the egg. Over time, Kevin's dedication finally pays off. Gordon retires and ends up making Kevin the new head chef. <laughs> Kevin's life starts to go uphill while Jake. Kevin is so grateful. Kevin is so, the humility of Kevin makes him more open to change and introspection, right? Humility is the point, right? And I think that's so beautiful. Uh, not gonna lie, these situations happen often enough that this vid, even though dramatic, isn't that far off from reality. And I think that's why Darman is so successful because the videos, though dramatic, aren't far off from reality. This is literally a scenario I think I've been in a hundred times watching my coworkers around me. I don't know how many times I've worked with people, which is why I don't like working with people, but like I'll work with people and there is always this guy in the group. There's always a woman in the group. There's always somebody in the group who's doing this like dramatic, like I want it now and I've earned it. And I'm, and I'm like, oh girl, why do people think they're owed something they haven't even worked for? And again, I understand like you can work and work and work and work and still be screwed over by the system or by the people in charge. And you feel like I'm never going to get it. But in the end, we're talking about senses of character. Is your character good? And I feel like this is again, Darman, as much as it's dramatic and kind of cheesy, it is so on point, which is again why I think the views are there. So again, like as a content creator, I'm amazed by Darman because I totally underestimated him, but obviously his numbers prove it. And then just in terms of introspection, what a great and simple tool for people to just ask themselves like, oh, is that me? Am I that guy at the restaurant who's kind of an ass? Like, do I need to work on myself? And then hopefully the answer is yes, because we all need to work on ourselves. Jake's life starts to go downhill. He ends up going from job to job, getting hired at a new restaurant, and then quickly quitting or getting fired. A few years pass, <laughs> and then one day, Jake happens to run into Kevin. Kevin? Jake? <laughs> How you been? Um, not so good. Mm. Things really haven't panned out the way I'd hoped. Mm. I actually came back looking for Gordon to see if I could get a job here again. Oh, uh, Gordon's not here anymore. He retired. He retired? Then who's the head chef? <laughs> it's -a me, a Mario. You're looking at him. Oh. You're looking at him! <laughs> How hard does that line hit? You're and looking at him. Go. What? No way. Congrats, man. 
The globe um, is real. So do you think I could get a job here as a cook again? Actually, Cody's the new cook here. Oh! He just... <laughs> got promoted. Uh, but if you want, we do have an opening for a server. That smug-ass smile. That was good. The hair just sprouting out. Yeah, 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 the hair. I look like a fucking In-N-Out employee. Hey, I worked at In-N-Out. Highly recommend. You can call me Cody Cook. <laughs> Rip. <laughs> Jesus. Server. Oh. Sure, why not? <laughs> Look, now I realize that success does require patience. And great things really do take time. I'm glad you realize that. Why don't we get you started? Aww. All right. So how's it been? Wow. I love it. <laughs> it's so good. I got to be honest, Darman did really finesse the dialogue in this. I didn't have it quite as as elegant, but he really he really wrapped it up. He made it easily digestible. So pretty good. You liked it? You I loved it, it. I really I really did love it. All right. So all in, wait, actually no. I need some inspirational ass music like Chef threatens to fire new cook. What employee does next will shock you? So that's the title they used? Man, I gotta work on my titles. Like Darman just used at the end of his video. Oh, now we're talking! I'd say overall, this was a massive success. As of writing this, the sketch that we made has 1.5 million views on YouTube with 70,000 likes and 2.7 million views on Facebook with 30,000 likes. And the comments are overwhelmingly positive. We have to look it up Like the this. top one on YouTube right now that says, alternate title. How an egg can destroy someone's career. Or this one. Guys, moral of the story, do not run into someone who is making eggs. Okay, maybe not those, but this one for sure. I was about quitting my job, but after watching this video, I have given it a second thought. Aha! So we did change a life. I gotta say, this has definitely taught me a couple things. First of all, to sit there and discuss production with a team full of wow. people who all know I've torn apart their videos before was humbling to mm. say the least. And second, I don't know, it's weird. Like my my workflow now that I've gotten used to is think of an idea, shoot it, edit it, post it. And that happens in the course of like a week. And now I've, I'm like conditioned to that dopamine cycle now. But this video, weirdly enough, <laughs> forced me to stay patient, which is, I don't know if that's irony or if that's, if Kelsey just knew that the whole time and she was just being a puppet master. Wow. But it is kind of poetic how this whole thing has come full circle. Nice. And, and I made a new friend. Overall, man, I thought it was a great video. I think a lot of people loved the lesson, and yeah, I was impressed. Great job writing it. How did it perform? Like, yeah. compared to other ones? Com on YouTube, it performed really, really well. Really? It performed awesome, so amazing job. On Facebook? On Facebook, it didn't perform as strong, but it was... <laughs> more so for the YouTube audience. Yeah, yeah. Oh, what was different, I wonder? Okay. Facebook is like, you gotta have a lot of emotion and like heavy conflict. Yeah. But people actually felt that this video was a little bit different than all the others and they really appreciated that. That's great. And especially, I think your cameo just kind of sealed the whole deal, <laughs> know. you know? Behind. People I were like, how could he be mad when you said behind? I know exactly, <laughs> right? People were like, wait, I don't get it. How do you go from a server to a cook? Isn't that a completely I different know, I know, I know. I thought about that as soon as I left. I was like, I wait, damn, that's not I really know. a promotion. It's kind of a whatever, whatever. Yeah. I think we still killed it. Yeah. That's I so think we got to end. I think we got to end my video like we ended yours. All right, let's do this. So thanks for watching. And please remember, we're not just telling stories. We're changing lives. <laughs> Thanks, I can't even say that with a straight face. Oh, even in my video, you're like, we're changing lives. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry to cut off the outro oh. so quickly there. I just could not wait another second. I had to let you know I have new merch. I called. Thanks, Cody. Okay, so. So cute. Okay, so now. Hold on. Let's see. Is the video link Darman official channel? Darman. Is this the video? Look what I got. Okay, hold on. How do I look up? Okay, Dar, excuse me, hold up. Okay, Darman, Darman Cody Co.
It has 31 million views. It has 31, 31 million views. Oh, Darman has 19 million subbies. Yo, when Cody first did the collab with Darman, he had 2 million subscribers on, on, on YouTube and 17 million on Facebook. And now he has 19 million subscribers on YouTube. Darman is killing the game. That is an insane effing difference, bros. Holy crap. And it, um, he retitled it to Chef Threatens to Fire a uh, New Cook. So Chef Threatens to Fire a New Cook. I wonder when he changed that. Oh, man, that's crazy. Oh, let's like it, you know, because we're Team Cody here. Wow. It was a six-minute video. Okay, noted. These are all Cody comments. I love that. 31 million freaking views, bro. That's insane. Oh, he put his Darman in the corner. Oh, interesting. Okay. So let's go to Darman. Look. Oops. Let's go to videos. Okay, so 20 hours ago, he put out a video called Black pa Black Panther fights bullies inside school. What happens next is shocking. Or, oh, he's got a series. Genius or well, Genius Jaden. Genius boy is kicked out of from the party episode two. That's interesting. Um, Halloween thief caught inside school. What happens next will shock you. Ooh, a King Batch video. Interesting. Spider-Man fights bullies inside school. Parents told vlogger he'll never make it. Seven days, two million views. Seven days, I'm sorry, six days, two million views. Seven days, three million views. Ten days, four million views. So he's busting them out, bro. He's like pumping out content. Whoa. Mean girl, shame emo girl in class. How dare you? Oh. I wonder how much production costs. Same. That's so interesting. Legend of Society. Okay, I want to get bigger on my YouTube channel, but I don't want to be famous. So everyone subscribe. Everyone like the channel. 18% of you who watch me aren't subscribed. 18% of people who watch me are not subscribed according to my analytics. So you guys should subscribe and like the stream. Thank you so much. Thank you. And follow, uh, become a member or join us on Patreon and join the Discord. We join us tomorrow on November 1st on the Discord, though. So because you'll get charged today and tomorrow if you join then. But if you join tomorrow, join and we can do yoga and do stuff together. We get a professional to come in and teach us, which is awesome. We do discussion events. OK, let's watch one of these videos, bros. Um, Let's watch, I guess. Let's watch the latest one. Let's watch what, the one with King Batch because that sounds interesting because, you know, King Batch. Let's go. This, oh, 23 minutes long? Oh, gross. Okay, can we have a shorter one? Oh, they're so long. Uh, hold on, let me find a shorter one because, like, I'm not watching fucking seven minutes. Oh, I wonder if Cody's was considered short for Darman videos. Oh, hold on. I feel that's a good ratio compared to so many channels. It is a good ratio, actually. I'm killing it. And we still have, like, a perfect divide of 60% women, 40% men. My favorite demographic is the men are awesome, but then it's a majority of women, so I still get to be a girl. I feel like so many women who make content online for male audiences have to become like a boy girl, and I'm more of a girl boy, so you know what I mean? I'm a girl who's also a boy, but I'm not a boy who's a girl, and I think a lot of girls have to pretend they're boys who are girls. You guys get what I mean. Okay, let's watch. Man, all these are so long. Oh, maybe that's, yeah, maybe that is why Darman is also successful. He's doing long episodes. Okay, fine. Let's try to watch this one just a little bit just to get the vibe. So this is King Batch five days ago, four million views. Let's see. Um, let go. Bye. I said let go. My purse. Let me link the video. Hey. Oh, I didn't know Spider-Man was... Was what? So young? 
So cute. Oh. Nice haircut. Oh. So full of riz. Oh. Then what is it? You didn't know Spider-Man was what? I was gonna say. Back that. up. Mm. <laughs> Ma'am. Am I supposed to be scared of this thing? <laughs> Oh. I didn't even ask you for help. Get oh. lost. Ma'am, what is happening? The kid thinks he's a superhero. What a joke. Goblin strikes again. You're struggling with the bag of chips? Look, look. Green Goblin hits another bag. And no Moose Wayne. Can you believe that? Where's he at? But look at that. Could you imagine having your picture in the paper? In the paper? Hmm. That'd be a dream. Look, I wouldn't be bothered by the bank robberies, honestly. I heard he only steals from, like, rich people. Hmm. What is happening? Peter? Peter! Yeah, what's up? Ah, these videos make the audience feel smarter than the characters. Oh, wait, is that part of the Darman formula? Because like I said earlier, I get feedback and I see the audiences want to feel like they're in on the joke with the content creator. They don't want to feel like the content creator doesn't think they're smart enough to be in the content or to be an audience member. So I wonder if the characters are written this way so their problems are obvious and then the solutions are obvious. So when people are watching, they can be like, oh my God, this is what he has to do. Like, it's so simple. But then they ha can't turn it around and like mirror themselves, which is sort of ironic. You know what I mean? Moose Wayne. Yeah, I think it's funny that they said Moose Wayne as if they can't say Batman's name, but they can full on take Spider-Man's imagery. This is, okay. You're never going to get anywhere if you don't talk to her. Yeah, I don't, I'll talk to her when I'm ready. I don't, you don't want to rush these things. <laughs> Come on, man. The Halloween dance. Whoa, wasn't our man the one in the controversy because he was barely paying his employees and making them work for long hours? I don't know. Is that true? Hold on, let me check. Tomorrow night. It's your perfect opportunity to ask Mary. Don't be scared. Scared? Scared? Me? <laughs> I'm not scared. I'm not scared of anything. Yes! It was a uh, spider. A spider. Big one. You see the irony, right? I'm gonna go talk to her. Okay. Godspeed. Hey, Mary! No, no. Hey, Mary. That's too deep. Hey, Mary, I was- No! <laughs> you just spilled my protein shake. Look, Not the bad, protein Butch. shake. I, I, I feel bad. Yeah, you I should. Didn't... You can't see where you walk? It says, okay, hold on. It says, um... Darman actors went on strike in February of 2023. Several actors working under his studio recently took to TikTok to reveal that they were protesting against the appalling working conditions. <gasps> this man makes a lot of money, like 22 annually, 22 million allegedly annually. Oh, oh, wait. Okay, Mr. Beast is worth 500 million, just to put that in, allegedly. Oh, interesting. Barely get paid enough to pay rent. Well, okay. Well, how much are you working, right? Because like a lot of people aren't getting paid enough. But okay, interesting. I wonder how he's underpaying them because they're probably contract workers, to be honest. Um, According to Reddit posts, his actors are freelance workers. Are you not aware of the rules and caveats of freelance jobs? 30 to $44 per hour is immensely. I guess people are arguing in the comments. Okay. Hmm. Um, uh, people are saying it's not true, but obviously it's probably true. I don't know. It's a little, it's hard to tell at this point. Okay. Huh? You ain't looking forward when you walk in forward? Oh, Butch, check it out. Oh, so you dressing up as Spider-Man for Halloween, huh? Because what are you, eight years old? I'm not dressing up as Spider-Man. They're literally all 40. Spider-Man. I am Spider-Man. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> you, you think you're Spider-Man? Okay, all right. 
You Spider-Man, huh? Let's test out these Spidey senses. Dodge this! Wait! Butch, don't be a bully. Let's go. Come on, doll. You know we just having some fun. Not at Peter's expense. Mm -hmm. Let's go. This ain't over. Women always cleaning up messes made by men. Yeah, what he said. You okay? <sighs> yeah. I didn't know Mary's dating Butch. This day just keeps getting worse. Come on. I know, I hate this feeling. What feeling? No, the feeling of being a loser. No one. <sighs> that. Yeah, I can't stand this school. Yeah, but it's not just the school, it's everywhere. It's strangers. They treat me like that too. My parents, they still don't talk to me. I know how much it hurts to be rejected. This is like incredibly hard to watch in terms of me as an audience member. Like, again, Darman's views speak for themselves. And I think that's what's so amazing is like, I am not the demographic for this, but I'm not mad at the demographic who watches this, right? Because that's, you know, 30 year olds in high school. I mean, to be fair, most American actors who play high schoolers are also in their 25 to 30s. That's pretty normal. Like all the actors you're seeing who play high schoolers, like in TV shows, they're not. They're all in their mid 20s to 30s. So it's pretty on par, actually, using adults to play high schoolers. That's usually what they're doing in Hollywood anyways. Um, OK, let's watch this then. By Sloan. Not a single actor that works at Diamond Studios can afford rent. People have been fired over having medical like conditions. That's kind of what happens on this show. A lot of people have been fired. This is a show that has millions of views. And if you say anything like, hey, I think we could do this better, you're fired. Things haven't really gotten better for us. It's not going to last. If he continues to treat people like this, the whole thing is going to just explode. I think that people should be aware of why we are protesting. Star man should go to jail for what he's done to his employees. Not only is Dar underpaying his actors. What the fuck was the point of that? Okay, Dar man's videos are killing views. So instead of making fun of Dar man, which we always do, we have to understand why does he appeal to so many people? Over 19 million subscribers, millions of views every day, guaranteed. And on Facebook, he's probably killing it even more. Right? What is this? The last one had cringe acting, but had a great lesson. Well, that's the thing. We don't know what the lesson is because that video was 23 minutes. Cody's was six minutes. So in contrast, Dharma's average video is 15 minutes or more. Cody's was six minutes. So I'm kind of surprised he makes videos that are so long, but apparently people are watching them. But he's also firing them for all the wrong reasons. For example, if you have a medical emergency, then you are fired. If you have a question for the Dar Man Studios production team, you are fired. There is so much tension in this workplace that now his employees are protesting on the streets. So let's get into it. I have linked Sloan's video in the chat. We're going to be talking about a controversial YouTuber who exploits their employees for financial gain, which really could be anybody. But today we're focusing on Dar Man. If you guys don't know who Dar Man is, he's a YouTuber accused of not paying his employees properly and then firing them for protesting. The reason why these people are protesting is because he's such a bad boss that he needs to be held accountable. And it also seems Seems like he's a greedy man. I mean, he's a YouTuber. You know what would help with this? A Darman video on the lesson of being a, a greedy boss. But more importantly, he's an entrepreneur who has a bunch of different businesses. He also owns a business called Darman Studios, which produces short films for YouTube. And now these employees, these actors are protesting against him for low wages. One of Dar's actresses named Jessica posted a video on social media claiming that Dar has wrongfully fired people, people who have medical issues or just, you know, mm. basic personal life issues are fired on the spot. People have been fired over having medical like conditions. It's wrong. Like it's just wrong. And if you say anything like, hey, I think we could do this better, you're fired. 
So Jessica claims that if mm-hmm. you have a medical emergency and you work for Darn Man, then you're going to be fired. And that seems to be a theme here. A bunch of different employees are fired for the wrong reasons, and now they're outside protesting his studios. Uh, they're 1099 workers. A lot of people have just been fired for asking for a meeting. Two of my friends asked for a meeting, got fired a day later. And not only did they not get fired, they weren't told they are being fired until the morning off. It's just rude. It's not how you do business. It's not okay. It's crazy. So not only are these people being underpaid, but they're also being fired on a whim, which is scary because, like, the economy, inflation, I mean, it's not easy out here. So losing your job. This guy has the most interesting movements. Like, the way he moves. This guy's Sloan. I've never seen him before. Maybe I have. I don't know. But he has, like, one of the most... The way he moves is very interesting. Um, Yeah, interesting. I want to know... I want to know what he's paying them and everything and how the hours work. That's the one thing about being a contract worker, though, right? In the USA, like, I'm a, I'm a contract worker in the USA, right? You don't get health insurance. You don't get those kinds of things. You're not guaranteed work. So that's why places like Amazon do hire you on as a contract worker so they can fire you at their whim. And so that's the question. And job security is always, like, difficult. It's a difficult conversation to have in the U.S., so I wonder what's happening. How many hours is everybody working? Why is this happening? Why does Darman also have the turnaround rate to be able to fire people willy-nilly and hire them back? And that's what's interesting is like Darman can't be literally hire- firing everybody. So and then why do people stay on, right? Because if he's really doing that to every single employee, I'm surprised that they don't all just quit. And then what would Darman do? I guess hire a bunch of new actors. But that's the question is like what I want to know the details is a big deal but not for dar man and that's because he's worth about 150 million dollars this man is racking up three million dollars every month i thought his net worth was 22 but that's what google said but apparently it's 150 get your coin get your bag but respect the people who you employ because they're part of the reason why you are so wealthy and he owns a bunch of different companies like cosmetic um oh he owns uh, some properties that make oh, him money. Oh, so he owns cannabis? What? He's got a lot of revenue coming in from different areas. But when it comes to his production company, it seems like he puts together these little short films using these actors. And I mean, here are some random clips from his TikTok page. You can see that he does stories like uh, Evil hmm. Nine Kicks Out Bad Teen, um, Drug Addict Kidnaps Five-Year-Old, um, Mean Girl oh. Shame teen at swap meet wait what so he creates a bunch of bizarre short films and i saw one person tweet out a screenshot of one of his short films titled mean bosses mystery employees which definitely didn't age well because he's got so many employees speaking out against him at this moment studios um, this with, is a really good point, by the way. It's not going to last. If he continues to treat music, people like music. this, the whole thing is going to just explode, which is really unfortunate because he has all of these fans all over the world. All over the world, people are watching us every single day. Hmm. Now let's talk about these employees because they have advocated for themselves and it didn't work. So that's why we're protesting. Quote, a lot of people Yo, have been fired previously for speaking out and asking questions. And that's why we've decided to come together as a collective and make our voices heard but that seems to have not worked but we're still here we're talking Hmm. so maybe the protesting hasn't immediately caused any change but they are trying and it's Hmm. definitely not a good look for dar when some of his star actors are out here protesting against him because some people watch this channel religiously so then they see their favorite actors calling out dar man then you know oh. why would they ever support this guy ever again this guy is actually one of dar man's biggest actors he is reoccurring he's on a bunch of different short films and he's kind of leading this movement so let's go ahead and react to this live stream tiktok together this face is seen here is, is fired because that's kind of what happens on this show a lot of people have been fired previously for speaking out mm. and asking questions and that's why we decided to come together as a collective um and, and make our voices heard but uh that seems to have not worked uh but we're still here we're talking um 
And, you know, we're just taking it sort of moment by moment, day by day, seeing what's going to happen. Uh, so, yeah, so thank you for all the support. So for the first few days, these protests didn't really garner a bunch of media attention. I guess this goes back to that conversation we were having over Sniper Wolf and Rosanna and everybody else, which is like, when is this someone truly authentic and a good boss and a good person and that successful, right? And that's successful. This is kind of key, right? People who need other people to be successful, people who are having a niche or a brand, like people who are really, because just to put it into, pro, um, like, uh, just to put it like, um, Cody has 6 million subscribers and Rosanna has 14 million, right? And then Mr. Beast has 200 million and Darman has 19 million. And then Sloan has 920,000, right? And it makes you wonder, like, what does it take for someone to reach certain numbers? What what audience gravitates in these numbers? So Darman hits international and global audience, right? So that's a lot of people. And then Cody is hitting a very specific niche because he's like comedy and like fun stuff. And then, of course, um, uh, uh, Rosanna is sort of like waning a little bit. But, you know, she's in the baking bubble. That's very specific, right? Probably mostly women and maybe gay guys and like some guys who like to bake. And then um, – Mr. Beast is getting like boys and young boys who like things that explode, right? And so there's big audiences in some of that and very small audiences in others. But it is sort of interesting because, again, 14 million randos don't just find you because. It means you had good branding. It means you had good a good channel. You had a good shtick. People believed you. You remember how you guys were asking about Jenna Marbles and if she's authentic? When Jenna got the backlash for the video she made way back in the day, that was Jenna making a video she thought was authentic to herself in terms of humor. And then she had to apologize for it. And even at the time I made a video about her saying like, what is this? Because, you know, obviously like women get enough flack as it is and they get sex shamed enough as it is. But it was one of those things where in a way she was being authentic. In a way, even past Britney kind of was upset at Jenna for being authentic. We don't want authenticity. We want content creators that reflect our views back to us, which is why once again, like I look at my past self and I can see myself holding way too hard to what content creators are doing. Even myself as a content creator, I held myself to such a standard because I was like, I have to speak for the people. And now I'm like, girl, I'm tired. I'm old. My skin cannot handle it. I just want to speak for myself and invite whoever is attracted to that into that. But that means you're branding less. Darman is a brand. He's very successful. Why do people who build these amazing brands treat their employees so poorly? What is that part of the formula, right? I wonder if one day we'll see Mr. Beast come out or his employees come out with like, Mr. Beast was a horrible employee, like our employer, he was the worst. Or will Mr. Beast break the stereotype? And it's always the question of like, yeah, like my boss. And then what are the expectations employees have that is maybe too far for anyone to ever fulfill? And those are always the questions I ask myself. And that's why I honestly, I get stressed working with people. I get excited, but then it like, it scares me because everyone's going to want a different version of work. Like some people want to work full time, no matter what they're doing and make enough to pay rent. And I hate to tell you this, I can't control rent prices. So like as a solo employer, if I'm going to pay you full time and assume you can pay rent, like I probably would never be able to afford employees unless I was making millions of dollars, right? Because if I'm thinking about rent prices, well, minimum wage isn't paying your rent. Not if you live in California, not if you live in an expensive place. And then what if it pays your rent, but not for the apartment you want? So a lot of the time what people do is they're like, you're worth a lot of money, so I should be making a lot of money. But that's not how it works. Even when I was in this um, business group, at one point, the suggestion I got from the other people in business was to hire overseas so I could pay them less to do the same labor an American would do. And I was like, um, yeah, I'm not going to do that. And they're like, why not? And I was like, well, I... I would rather hire an American and help like somebody here because like I'm an American and I understand they're doing it from a business perspective. They're thinking cheaper labor, but from my perspective, and this is why I'm bad at business, I'm thinking community. <laughs> I'm thinking, let me hire someone in my community, which is not actually as business savvy, but it's also works within my values, right? So again, when we're having these conversations, we have to ask ourselves, when you say like, he doesn't even pay enough for us to afford our living, what is the living you can't afford? Because if they're getting paid $35 an hour, that is much more than the average person. So again, I want I want there to be like a conversation around all of, like I, I want there to be a lot of conversations, you know what I mean, about the, the details. 
question. There isn't TMZ or, you know, people out there asking questions because not a lot of people pay attention to Dar Man. But there's the power of TikTok. And now some of these actors are taking it into their own hands to call out this man and share their own experiences. Essentially, as an actor at Dar Man Studios, I am just a contract player. I have no employment there. I am just sort of called every now and then, right. as are all the other actors. And it just is not sustainable. Um, and there are a lot of issues at hand here, but uh, one of the main issues is that not a single actor that works at Diamond Studios can afford rent. This is a show that has millions of views across multiple social media platforms. Um, videos are shot, edited, posted. But things haven't really mm. gotten better for us. And again, I don't want to go into specifics because it's a kind of a big thing and it's really just between us. Uh, but I think that people should be aware of why we are protesting. Why? Um, Cree, you said the pay should cover the rent in that area, but that's not true. Because school teachers in average areas aren't like in, in New York and California, like in California, a teacher is not really able to afford the rent they have to usually get a second job my friends who have full-time employment usually have two to three jobs even i have to have like multiple jobs like i don't know if you guys understand that i'm working multiple jobs technically like youtube is one job so streaming is one job then of is another job and then anything i do on the extra is another job like taking calls is its own thing on the side so there's like three things i have to do and then that seems to be average most of the people i know all have roommates or they have multiple jobs. So again, I think that idea of like, oh, you know, and it is a problem for sure. Like, I'm not saying it's not a problem, but it's not the problem of the employer. It's the problem of the renters, right? I feel like it's not the problem of the employer if they're paying you what is normal. I think it's the problem of the landlords, right? So I think that my issue is, again, like how much of this falls on the employers and how much of this falls on the landlords and the whole the whole bubble, you know what I mean? Um, Brittany, you'd make a great boss with that mentality. I really think I, I'm a poor boss. Like I really don't think I'm actually suitable to run a company or work with employees. Uh, but I like the idea of in my head of almost thinking I'm good enough. And also the commenter who said JK News talked about and tried to be transparent with all the complications of owning businesses and even working with friends. Literally, right? It's so complicated working with friends or people who have watched your content or it can just get muddled and you don't know what their life is like. So here you are paying a wage you think is fair, but in their head, they're thinking, why am I making more money? I'm struggling. But they have to remember we're all in that boat. So again, like, you know what I mean? I was trying to pay an editor and that was so fun. And he was so great and I loved working with him. But realistically, like I, it was a, like, I couldn't afford that realistically, I can't afford that unless I'm making a lot more money. So every time I hear from YouTubers who are like, get an editor, how do you pay for your editors? Like, how do you pay for them? On what income? Like, how much do you make before you get an editor? Because everyone's always like, get an editor. Um, Ma'am, if you're even paying your editor seven to $1,000 a month, that's a lot of money. You know what I mean? For a 1099 worker, that's like all my tax. Like that's, what are you talking about? So, and then on top of that, you're paying regular rent prices and you're competing with the market like everyone else. It's like, that's a lot of money. So again, I don't know who these people are who like are all like hire an editor. I, I could not afford it. Like I'm like, I can't afford this. It's a nice idea, but I don't know how people are paying for it unless they're making millions of dollars already. Or like if I was making maybe like $200,000, I could probably get an editor a year consistently. But it's like, and then you have to get an editor that's competitive. Like Ab and Preach, I'm so excited to see how their editor stuff goes. I keep getting the TikToks. But Ab and Preach are calling for an editor who can work completely on their own, independent, and knows what they're doing without a lot of feedback and can actually make content and bring in more views. That means you're hiring an editor who can be on their own full time and consistent and on time and be disciplined and make basically bring more views in with their editing style. How much do you pay that person? Every time I've asked YouTubers, like how much are they paying people? It's so confusing. Everyone is confused on what they're supposed to be paying, what's negotiated, how much people should earn. And then some people have come to me with like crazy prices, like, oh, a good editor, maybe the, you know, I've heard some people say, oh, a good editor costs like a hundred thousand a year. Or if you're, uh, you know, some people you give a percentage of your AdSense. It's just very complicated. 
It's a nice idea though, but I don't know how people are doing it. You know what I mean? Don't, do not work with friends. Yeah, I agree. I think I'm, I know, you know what I mean? I don't want to work with anybody. I think at this point, I'd rather just work extra hours. It's too much emotional labor to work with people. It's so hard to work with people. I'm not very good at it. And look, I don't want to run into these situations where people are like, Brittany's not paying me enough to pay my rent. Well, fuck, look, I'm not, I can't pay, I, I can't be the sole reason you pay rent. But some people have it in their mind. Like if I'm working full time, I should be able to pay my rent. But the rest of us have two to three jobs. So you have to get two to three jobs. You know what I mean? So it's just interesting. I don't know what is the actual actual solution to any of this, of course. I just think there's a lot of assuming. You know what I mean? But yeah. Um, we'll see what happens moving forward. Hi, we are out there right now. We've been talking to a lot of actors. Um, it's the same. Everybody feels the same across the board. So I have a few takeaways from that TikTok. There's two things I want to say. First off, when it comes to acting and actors out in LA, that's kind of the culture. I mean, nobody makes enough. That's why they're working at restaurants or they have their side gigs because being an actor just isn't sustainable because you don't need to be doing that 40 hours a week. That being said, this man is in a a different situation because it's an online show. I've actually had opportunities to act on, you know, television before. Oh. And they just don't pay enough for me to go and do something like that. But the internet pays a little bit better. Amen. And looking at the uh, Dar Man Studio Social Blade, it looks like they're making plenty of money to Ooh. pay these actors adequately. It looks like they're racking up about a million dollars a month, which I have to say Social Blade is mm. pretty inaccurate in the sense that it's usually a lot lower. So um, I would say they're probably racking in like $1.5 million a month just in ad revenue, which is... Yeah, but they have sets and all these companies. And that's the question is like, I don't know. I don't know how these companies do it. You know what I mean? Insane. Because if this guy is making $3 million a month, like half of it's coming from YouTube. So I believe mm. that these employees understand this. And that's why they've gone to their boss and they've tried to find some resolution. When the mm. employees attempted to talk to Darman by themselves, he refused to meet with them. Oh, His that's management also fired all those who tried to... Do they have an HR? I guess they don't for 1099 workers. I wonder if he just has an attitude that if anyone causes a stink, he fires them, which is psychopath. Like, that's crazy. Right? Like, that's crazy. Two to three full-time jobs. Might as well kill myself because that will kill me. I mean, I don't know how you're competing with the economy, right? If you're really living on your own in, like, an expensive state, you know what I mean? Like, that just happened. One of my friends, she works, like – a part-time and a full-time job and her part-time job just and she was barely she's like on low income working one and a half jobs and her part-time job wanted her to go to full-time but she couldn't do it and now she's like out in income and now she's like how do I make that income up so that's what's difficult and she's on like she's considered low income even though she has one and a half full-time jobs but like she doesn't make enough so it's difficult out here. You know what I mean? Or even I've always worked two to three jobs, like always work them. It's just what it is. I'm used to it because I, again, like I've made very little to made like pretty comfortable to like last year I made a lot, but you know, it's not consistent because it's like gig work. So you never know, but it is interesting. You know what I mean? It doesn't make sense to use rent prices to determine wages in the world with the internet. Cali rent is not the same as Arizona prices. They're getting fair, though. Oh, Arizona's wild, bro. Arizona's wild. I can't believe how much they've gone up in rent. Well, to be fair, the Kellys did move there, right? Like the Californians did work there or move there. It's kind of crazy. It's kind of crazy. Of course, that 3K is in your livable over the course of a year, but that's why it's additional disposable income. Mm. I've worked two jobs and almost died, bro. It's a lot. It's a lot. It's not easy, right? It's, it's very stressful. That's for sure. Um, somebody said something, are they using the same actors in every video? Like, I wonder what's the average time working versus not working and the spaces in between those periods. I want to know that too. I d obviously not, right? Like every video is a little bit different. Obviously not. That's so interesting though. Hmm. 
question him. According to the actor we just heard from, all those working at Dar Man's place were unhappy with how they were treated. And it actually turns out at some point they did <laughs> have a meeting scheduled, but Dar Man just didn't show up. He's been Crazy. rude to them and mistreating them. So it sounds like they're fed up and that's why they're going public. Because if you call them out, you're fired, you're let go. Mm -hmm. And then these people really just have nothing. That's crazy. Uh, we, uh, about a month ago, we asked Dar for a meeting just to discuss some work issues that we've been having, issues at work with the company, with life here. Um, and we were given a meeting. Dar was not present at that meeting. So we asked for another meeting where Dar was going to be present. And we were told we would not get a meeting. Damn. Um, that was Damn, a week that's after wild. we asked, a week and a half after we asked. Uh, so we decided to come out here and get our meeting. That's all we want to do. We just want to have a conversation with Dar. Uh, but so far we've been protesting for two days and that's not happened. We've had the cops called on it. <laughs> That was another clip from our Damn. actor who's pretty much leading this movement. But there are other actors who are involved. Like this lady who's specifically calling out Dar Man at these protests. If you want to listen to us, if you don't respect us, like we're going to show, show up and we're going to show you that we need business. And if it hurts your brand, like I'm sorry, but you don't get to go around acting like you're a moral guru when you treat the people who helped make you like crap. It's not fair. And okay. he's not going to be able to spread, pretend that he spreads good messages when he doesn't treat the people around him. Hey, hey. That is pretty true because Darman mm -hmm. is known for preaching goodness and you know having His hair morality. Is wild, bro. How much gel is in that hair? No judgment, but damn. Someone quoted him saying, "Never take advantage of someone." Meanwhile, he's doing the same thing to all of these employees. And if this is how his actors are treated, imagine employees at his other brands. Mm -hmm. Because it seems like this guy just really cares about the money. I'm not taking <laughs> sides when it comes to this situation. Maybe the actors are wrong. Maybe Darman <laughs> is cynical. I have a feeling there's something going on over here with Darman because he seems very defensive. They actually responded through the Darman Studios Instagram page. Mm -hmm. And they're defending everything that these protesters are calling out. Hey, how? Hashtag Darman fam. We want to address the recent protests by some of our mm. actors. Um, first off, they thank them. For background, we did arrange an in-person hour-long meeting with actor representatives and two of our most senior leaders, but mm, not Darman. And I think these people want to specifically meet with Darman, not senior leaders, not head of production. They tried to have an initial meeting. They clarify that they pay their actors about $18 an hour for extras and $33 to $44 an hour for actors, which is pretty standard, and that's a good rate. But keep in mind that these people are probably only working like, you know, four hours a week, so they're not getting Ooh. a ton. I want to know, uh, how old is this T? I want to know if this worked. This was eight months ago, this video. Um, so this is like old T. We just watched a Darman, like how he does his videos with Cody Ko, and then we want to watch this. We're just talking about different bubbles, but like, See, that's the problem. It is sort of a fair wage so far, but they're not maybe working full time. Like that's the dilemma I am seeing where it sounds like, okay, to me, this is my personal opinion, right? I think not taking a traditional job, not working for a company as a W-2 uh, worker is everything outside of that is sort of like more of a privileged G job. And I mean that in a specific way because not all 1099s work the same. But I do think if you're aiming to not work a traditional job, so you're shifting the economy, if I think if you, like if you're, you know what I'm saying? If you're working a 1099 job, the consequences of that are clear. You get taxed at a higher bracket. You're not going to get health insurance and you can get let go at any time. And yes, that can happen with a traditional job. It's just like a little bit different usually. And so the, the problem I'm seeing again is like, actors, YouTubers, so many people who do gig jobs. I don't know why I feel like they have so much entitlement to having some sort of consistency, but I would argue you only do this if you know there's a high risk. You only take that Amazon job as a 1099 worker because it's a high risk, but it's a big pay. And then you get fired one day without any warning. I'm not saying it's ethical. That's a different conversation to have. I'm saying know the game you're playing. Know the game you're playing. If you're in the arts, if you want to go into acting, if you want to go into Hollywood, right? Know the game you're playing. Know that there's going to be a casting couch and you have to make the decision. Do I want to do this thing to get this role? Now for me, no. No amount of money is going to make me do that, okay? No money, no amount of fame. I don't love anything enough 
to like ever be taken. Like I refuse. Okay, ma'am, I will quit this right now. I'll delete my whole YouTube channel right effing now. Okay. So for me, I'm not that kind of person. I will get two to three normal jobs before I will do anything I don't want to do. But that's because the game I'm playing is like stick to your values, not money and not a dream. I don't have a dream. Like I didn't grow up with like, but I just want to be an actor. Like I don't have that dream, right? I have a dream of being like, I want to make money so I can do the things I want to do when I'm not working or I want to turn things I like to do into a job. So my mindset is like you work to do hobbies or you make your hobby your job. Like those are the two ways my brain works, right? Now I'm covering Britney Spears in the podcast tomorrow, but something that stood out to me about the Britney memoir is like she didn't want money or fame necessarily. She just wanted to perform. But the dilemma with it is that in order for Britney to perform the way she's always wanted to perform, there's so much at stake in terms of your dignity and agency. You know what I mean? So again, there's something to be said about what are we willing to sacrifice in a self-harm way for the thing we want versus what are we willing to sacrifice for our joy? I'm willing to sacrifice my dream job to stay within my values to follow my joy. Some people are willing to sacrifice their dignity to have the dream job they want. And you need to know which camp you're in, you know, which camp are you in? I am values over money. A lot of people are money over values and that's you do you. Okay. But that's the thing is like, I, I can't like, there are just certain things I refuse to do. You know what I mean? And so a part of me is like proud of these actors for standing up for themselves. But then what game are they playing? If they're actors, like what game are you playing? Acting is a very difficult job and it's not fair. How many scandals have to come out of Hollywood or acting guilds or any of these things for people to realize like it is a doggy doggy world, okay? It is very, very hard. And so for me, like, no, thank you, ma'am. Britney Smears even says like, I'm not built for this. Like I'm not built for fame, she says. And I think like someone like Kim Kardashian is. Like Kim Kardashian is so built for fame. I could never be that famous. I literally just, the idea makes me wanna like, I feel a little bit sick. Like, guys, don't get me wrong. Subscribe. I want a bigger YouTube channel, but I do not want to be famous. I do not want to be in the tabloids. I do not want to have my name mentioned. You know how Trisha Paytas, like, loves it when people talk about her? I love that for Trisha. My nightmare. My literal nightmare. I do not want that. Rosanna being in the news right now, like, I don't know how she's handling that because I would not like that. And you don't have to get to that level to have a successful like career. People put it in your head that you have to have that to be successful. You don't, right? No, you don't. But people think they do. So again, what game are you playing, right? Um, <clears throat> okay, I'm just reading your comments. I agree, Brittany. That's why I got a finance degree. Nobody wants to be an accountant, but it's safe. I'm perfectly fine with that. Keep my screenwriting as my hobby instead of relying on it. Oh my God. First of all, great job. Love that. Um, that's a great job. That's a great example, right? Like get a solid job and do things on the side because to be honest, like the world is going to want specific jobs. Like it's going to need specific jobs that will pay well. And yeah, work is work is work. And then do the thing you like on the side. And if you're lucky, you can turn your hobby into a job if you're lucky, right? But you have to always work at it. It's exhausting. You know what I mean? You just leave us like that. I would only leave you if I really had to. Otherwise, I will never leave you unless I have to. Ton of time. It's not like a 40 hour shift. And they're also being expected to block out a few different days of their lives for a certain shoot. Exactly. I could never do this gig. It's so inconvenient. It's not consistent. I would, I would, could never be an actor. And they don't really learn about the hours or when they're going to be working until right until that day. So a lot of them can't like balance other work with their darn man studio's Obviously. work. Then they but they nobody can. Gig workers have the hardest time balancing all everything. Hello. Pull out the receipts. Myth number one. Darman did not show up to a meeting mm -hmm. he promised he would attend. That's fucked up. They claimed that Darman is obviously very bad at doing something here. He's he's messing up very badly here. The truth is that on Friday, January 13th, by the end of the day, they received an email requesting a meeting. Um, they were asked to respond by Monday, which was uh, MLK Day. So uh, they 
did initially try to set up a meeting, but I guess it never actually worked out. Despite mm -hmm. the short response demand, our head of HR responded by Monday, and they blocked out some names here, but they did actually get back to them by MLK Day asking to have a meeting. Part of the reason mm -hmm. why I feel like they did respond to this email is because they know there's something going on here, so they probably- I feel like um, you said, I mean, I would like to know why Darman didn't show up to the meeting. <clears throat> How often of the, uh, of a thing is this? You know, my theory, I could be wrong, is that he probably didn't show up to the meeting for the same reason Mr. Beast never made a public statement about Rosanna. Is when you're that big and that famous and you're working with lawyers and companies and all of this obligation, like, again, he's not a YouTuber. Darman and Mr. Beast, they're not me. They're not YouTubers, guys. They are full-on businesses working at a hundred million plus level of income. They are playing a completely different game. So people might have a, a fantasy of like, I have access to these people, but eventually Mr. Beast and Darman are like Mark Cuban, right? You wouldn't work at Mark Cuban's company and think I should have access to Mark Cuban. Like that's not how it's going to work. So I have a feeling that what ends up happening is people think like, why didn't Mr. Beast make a statement on Rosanna? Mr. Beast has lawyers and he can't make a statement. He's running a business like he has to be very careful because he's not a YouTuber. And yes, sometimes Mr. B slashes out and looks very human, but it's probably a statement he's allowed to make. You know what I mean? So again, I think there's something here where there's like a miscommunication about Darman and like how accessible he is, but he probably doesn't want to come face to face with the people he's also hurting. So in some ways it's painful to be like, hey, I know you guys want a fair like compensation, but I'm doing my best with what I can based off industry level. And honestly, like this isn't a fair job. This job is difficult and you are going to suffer because it is an arts job. It's a gig work. And I wish businesses would, t I wish we would be more honest about selling people dreams and just say, hey, your dream sucks. It's very fucking difficult. And you're going to absolutely struggle to pay your bills if this is your dream until you are successful. I hate to tell you that. God bless. Like, I, I, your dream sucks. Like, your dream is hard. Okay. Your dream is beautiful for you on this little planet of like 70 years you have on this planet if you want to spend your life doing it. But it is absolutely a struggle and you absolutely will not be able to necessarily afford your bills because you're following a dream. How beautiful for you, right? Like following a dream. And again, maybe it's just because of the way I was raised, but dreams don't pay the bills. Okay. Playing the right game does. I did want to avoid this ever going public. In the response from the actor representative, it was stated that we would. Like, hold on. I have a friend in like the arts. And they're very like old school about the arts. And I'm like, you know, you could just go to Instagram and like pop off and get sponsorships and you could do your like gig job, but like also make money on social media. And they're like, I don't like social media. Like I'm a traditional artist. I'm like, oh, blah, 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 blah. this is why you're going to die poor. I'm a traditional artist. Okay. Have fun with that, bro. Die on the construct that you've created. Like get on Instagram and start doing some flips or whatever. Like, what are you doing? Like you could be making money, but they're like, I don't want to do that. Like I'm a traditional artist. Girl, eat your oatmeal and starve. Like I love you. But like, that's what I'm saying. Like, okay, let's be real out here. Everybody has a reason why they won't do things and that's fine. Like values over money and that's what they're choosing. But if your values are causing you to be, okay, eating beans and rice for the rest of your life, I don't know, ma'am. I don't know, ma'am. I feel like good people can get good jobs, you know? TMM is here. Hello, TMM. Whenever people learn that I make money on YouTube, they ask me how, how to do it. And I always warn them how hard it is, especially if they're kids. It's so difficult. It is constant, 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 constant. There's absolutely no sleep and your numbers are always, always fluctuating. Some days you wake up and you're like, oh my God, I made an extra like $1,000. And then some days you wake up and you're like, I made a negative $2,000. Holy shit. It's very weird. It's a very weird gig. I think I saw a TikTok that said, oh my gosh, I quit a job that was giving me a consistent paycheck for a life where I just have to like go make money now. It's like, oh, you're an entrepreneur? Go make money now. How do I make money? And it's like, go find it. Oh my God, I have to go find money. Like, you know what I mean? I appreciate Dar and Ruben's attendance. It was never stated that it was required that Dar 
attends these type of meetings. So they had a Ruben and the production people and all these other people attend the meeting because um, Dar is probably way too busy for this. They then continue, because of the unsuccessful meeting, we then asked for any feedback to be put in writing and we attend to it as quickly as possible. We never received a response and from there the protest started. And that's probably because <laughs> Dar Man didn't attend this meeting and they really want to speak to him. They're probably tired of these other people because they can't like answer to what they are requesting which is the big boss to do them right this last slide really gets me because mm -hmm. they actually have a box in their building called the yeah but darman's not gonna do it that's what i'm saying like quit darman protest against him say that it's unfair but ultimately like i don't know that he's not also following a standard of the industry that's the irony guys like Every industry has a standard that's difficult to deal with, right? It is it is the reality of, again, not taking the traditional nine to five, which is why in so many ways it's better to do the nine to five. I think I told you guys during COVID, one of my brothers tried to work for himself and realized like, oh my gosh, like I don't have the discipline to do this. It is so difficult to find money. So he went and got a traditional job, makes really good money. And he was like, I'm just doing this. And I'm like, yeah, like, you know what I mean? Just do you anonymous actor feedback box which people can leave their opinions in it's collected frequently and reviewed by management they claim that none of these people you know put their messages in the box and that they've done everything in their power to try to welcome some well type i don't of believe that i don't believe these companies are doing everything in their power to hear their employees out that's obviously not true conversation or some you know i guess forgiveness here but i would be a little bit frustrated if my workplace just had a box like this and that my major issues were just diminished to a little slip being put into a box and just you know whenever someone gets to it then we'll handle it it's giving very much <laughs> like elementary school which <clears throat> isn't professional at all i also found another tweet really interesting so my favorite dar man fact is that before his youtube career took off he was a self-proclaimed <gasps> entrepreneur in the medical weed business who ended up getting convicted of multiple felonies for defrauding the city of oakland let's go Ooh. ahead and break down this article together a young and politically connected businessman who sought fame as the ganja entrepreneur <laughs> in Oakland's medical marijuana industry was charged with 13 felonies for defrauding a city grant pro 13 felonies yo but was it over we defrauding a city grant program that helps poverty owners for renovations oh <gasps> Program. And of course, it's our guy, Dar Man, who's been accused of stealing thousands of dollars from the city in the years 2008 and 2009. Dar owns a property management firm, rents limousines and exotic cars, and is a scion of one of the biggest taxi companies. Prosecutors said Dar Man, while operating Man Edge Properties of Oakland, defrauded the city redevelopment programs that paid as much as half of the cost of renovations to commercial buildings that he owned. Starman submitted copies of cashier's checks made payable to contractors as proof that he made the renovations, but he actually paid the contractors much less and oh. redeposited the checks in his own bank accounts. Oh. oh, shit, bro. Oh, this is what I'm saying. I'm so cynical now. See, this is what I'm saying. Every time I see a very, very, very successful anything, I'm like, what did you do to get there? What did you do to get there? Like, I just want to know the deets. Like, what are you doing? What are you doing to get there? Tell me. Like, okay, because every time, I swear to God, I've had opportunities. Every time I'm faced with an opportunity, they always ask you to do things. Like, people all have these, like, criminal stories. It's very rare you actually make it just being, like, chill and thoughtful and lovely and blah, blah, blah. Like, uh, uh. Oh my gosh, this is so interesting. Actually, did you guys see that Cody Co. and Noel did this podcast for um, Tiny Meat Gang where um, they talked about um, how difficult it was to like not feel afraid that they were going to lose everything, right? Because yes, they made a lot of money and they're both really well off, but they had to think about the future. So they made a studio where they have multiple podcasts. And some people were like, oh, these podcasts aren't good. They're falling off. They don't get a lot of views. But they actually feel like, no, these podcasts have individual audiences. They're pretty successful. They're really happy they invested in them. They want to make them get bigger. 
but they had to run a second job. So even Cody Co and Noel that have like 5 million subscribers, they have constant views, they are worth a lot of money. Even they know that they need longevity. And so they invested in a studio of their own to promote more content creators, to give people like a platform to start off on. I think there's something to this that is very interesting about longevity. Look at FooseyTube who made $7 million and then lost every penny, right? Look at all these people in football even who like come from poverty, get into football and lose every penny. Like money is great. And you think, oh my God, I'm gonna make so much money the rest of my life, but it doesn't work that way. And then you have to think about investing. So I always think about that football player. I don't know his name because I don't know if sports, I'm too gay, but he spent only his, what was it? I think sponsorships, but kept his normal income and his savings, one or the other. And I always thought, oh, that's so interesting. Like he had the discipline to do that. It's really difficult to do that, right? And so I look at moments like this and I always wonder like, how did you build your business? What did you do? How did you like get where you're going? And it's one of those questions I have to ask myself, like, how did you get here? And are you a drama channel that does drama every day and tears people's lives apart for a living? Like, are you um, snooping into people's lives? Are you, you know, lying to employees? Like I always think like, how did you get big? Because usually appealing to like the vice in a person, the lowest common denominator is kind of like the thing. Okay. So the other day I was talking to my partner and I was like, man, I put out this like philosophy type video and it was really slow. Like even my viewers weren't excited to watch it, even though now it's like up a thousand views and like we're okay. And people really loved it. The people who watched it. And I was so excited to make, I thought it was one of my best videos. I was like, I loved the video and people who loved it really loved it. And I was like, oh, this is so great. I was like, oh, but like YouTube even weren't like, hey, like more people aren't watching this video. And I was like, Man, like people really just like, you know, it's hard for people to just consume, consume philosophy. It's it's heavy. And I'm like, man, that makes me feel like how should I pivot my content to be philosophy but pop culture? How do I build this channel, right? How do I invite more cool people in? How do I get their attention? Well, he was like, okay, I want you to like understand where you are in the running. I was like, okay. He's like, let's go. Let's look at Verveki's channel. So my partner took, takes me over to Verveke's channel. He's like, you love Verveke? I was like, yes. And he goes, and Verveke is an actual professor who like studies philosophy for a living. I was like, yes. And he goes, he has 100,000 subscribers. So basically where you are. And I was like, okay. And he goes, he gets 4,000 views a video. And I was like, yeah. And he goes, yeah. And I was like, okay, yeah. Like, yeah. Like I have to understand that if I stick to this niche, that is the reality of my job. So then I have to be what more capitalistic. Someone said that in the comments, right? But it is one of those things where, you know, playing the game, like Darman figured out the script. He figured out the formula to exactly get the views. He figured it out. And it's like, yeah, but I don't want to be Darman and I don't want to have to do what he did to figure it out. And a part of me wonders like, if this is his reputation, what else has he done to figure it out? You know what I mean? But I think that's really why radical acceptance is so important when it comes to work. Work is like, if you're lucky, you turn your hobby into a job, which I've done. You know what I mean? And then second to that, as long as you can pay your bills and put a little bit away in savings, like you have so much to be grateful for. So that's why I've transformed my mindset into like, look how lucky I am to just be able to do my job. And I make normal income. I make normal people income, right? It's just so interesting. Like, I just, I was like, oh, yeah. Like, Darman's making, gosh, he has so many viewers. But look at what he, look at the kind of person that he was coming up. And then look at the way he's treating his employees now. And it's like, oh, it's icky. And I don't, you know what I mean? Oh. Mm. So he got some money from the city to rebuild commercial buildings, but he didn't really rebuild those buildings. He like kind of did a few renovations, but really just pocketed the money. And it looks like the city oh, paid him more than $44,000 to redo these commercial buildings that he never actually did. So if this man is capable mm. of defrauding a city, then, you know, underpaying employees, disrespecting them, firing mm. them for whatever reason, He's sounds a it. lot easier than mm -hmm, that. Mm -hmm. So I will leave you with that note. I want to mm. hear what you guys think in the comments below. I am so excited to be filming again. I've got a staple in my head. I was also really oh. hot. That's why I took off my Whoa. sweater. I usually don't like film in a tank top because I don't want to make people. Oh, let's go. But I am looking, you know, strong. Um, the I wonder if you guys can see the staple. I also have a beauty filter on because my skin is so bad right now, guys. I'm just like really insecure. I've okay, been... honest beauty filter. I was wondering why he looked a little different or shiny, it. not different, because he lo he looks. I don't know what he looks like. I've never watched his videos, but he looks 
His skin looks interesting. Anyways, I love you. Here's my email, and I'll see you guys in a new one soon. Bye, guys. Why does he give out his email? Oh, that was interesting. Why does Sloan give out his email? What's that about? Anyways, very interesting. Isn't that funny watching the Darman through Cody's eyes? And then he was like redeemed. And we're like, oh, Darman's kind of fun. And then we looked up Darman recently and we're like, oh. Um, what's this? You know? Kaya says your audience would be so different too. True. I comment maybe a few times in other live streams but rarely actually have conversations with other chatters. Here I know people are excited to exchange ideas. Very true. Which is why I'm like so grateful because it's true. My Discord is popping and so chill. Everyone here is so chill. Like, um, it's just so nice. Like, it's just so it's and I want to come to work every day. Like, I want to get on my Discord. I want to I want to come to work every day. I've had audiences that were so exhausting to me. I was like, I don't want to come. But now I just I I love being here. You know what I mean? Yeah, I just I feel so lucky. So you know, okay, so interesting. Darman controversies. One after another. Okay, let me find that Darman Cody Co video so I can link it in my when I clip this. Wow, that was so interesting. Okay, now. What time is it? Almost 11 p.m. Cody almost made us forget that humans were going to human. Cody and his good nature. Yeah. Oof. So funny. I think he gives it out for subscribers. He used to do shout out subscribers and show the gifts they sent him. Oh, that's sweet. Like a fan email, you guys said. See, now I'm personally so invested in bringing her philosophy content because honestly, I couldn't care less about Darman or whatever the person is. Okay, that's thank you guys for sticking with me while we watch a dark man. And my head in Miller bonded, my belly's being fed, and I'm okay. I'm just fine, yet all I do is whine. Not to you in my mind, cause I know I don't make sense. I've been nothing but blessed. So why's my life a mess? Please tell me, cause I'm sick of thinking yeah i'm sick of reaching out for the truth and living life as a fool dun, 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 dun.